Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and today we are installing Ghost BSD 10.1. It is 10.1, right? So as you all might recall, I installed PCBSD to my laptop a few months ago because I really wanted to give BSD a fair try. PCBSD sucked, but I got a lot of people in the comments telling me that it was actually a bad distribution to choose. Now I chose it because from an outsider's perspective it looked like it had a lot of documentation and a lot of support behind it based on what I've heard about BSD and what I've heard about, you know, I've I've seen interviews with some of the PCBSD developers on the Linux Action Show. Um, just by word of mouth, PCBSD I thought was the best option for a newcomer, but yeah, a lot of people in the comments section were telling me that PCBSD is actually really, really bloated. And even though that might be okay for this computer, it's not exactly okay for my laptop because the laptop is really, really low-end. So yeah, we want a light system if possible. So what all of that means is, as you can see, my laptop right now is running Antergos. Uh, that's what I ended up putting on it just for temporary usage because uh, I just could not use PCBSD at all. But I had been waiting. I really wanted to try out GhostBSD. It's another BSD distribution. Now one of the reasons I didn't try it out the first time was because the grammar on their website's horrible. I don't think they're native English speakers. If they are, then they suck at their native language. But if they natively speak another language, then I guess that's, you know, understandable that the English is bad on their website. But that drives me away from trying programs right there if the grammar is all weird on their website. And then another reason why I didn't just go with GhostBSD the first time around is because GhostBSD is based off of FreeBSD. And FreeBSD had just updated to a new version of FreeBSD. And so GhostBSD was in that in-between phase where they were in the process of updating to the new FreeBSD release, FreeBSD 10.1, I believe. But they hadn't done that yet. Uh, GhostBSD jumped from version 4. They used to have their own version scheme. They, they jumped from version 4 all the way to version 10.1, and now they are just copying the version scheme of FreeBSD, which I like because they're based off of FreeBSD. It makes it really easy to see what version of the software you're using. So yeah, with all of that out of the way, I'm going to give BSD one more shot, or 10 more shots, I don't know. I'll probably never actually be comfortable with it, but I'm going to keep on trying. So, like I said, I just flashed GhostBSD 10.1 Mate Edition. Still going with Mate Edition because I have nothing against XFCE. I'm using it on my, my web server, but Mate I find to be uh, possibly a little lighter and definitely more polished. So, those two things combined make me want to use that. So yeah, here we go. We're going to install it now. Alrighty, so... We are recording here, and now there's background noise, but you guys are just going to have to deal with that because this is the only time that I've been able to find to record in the past three weeks. But we are going to go ahead and attempt to reboot into the GhostBSD flash drive. If this doesn't work, it's going to make me kind of sad because that would be a lot of extra work that I would have to do off camera, getting that flash drive to work. It can be touchy sometimes. F12, F12. I think I'm... Oh, here we go. Alright, so GhostBSD. Graphical install. Currently getting video on the capture card, but not on the actual physical screen. Which is fine, you know, as long as we have video somewhere. Um, and I guess it's better on the capture card than just on the physical screen. Okay. And it rebooted. And we are back to this menu. Okay, let's try failsafe visa mode. See if that does anything differently. So I'm keeping an eye on the terminal a little bit more this time. I think it just crashed again. Yeah, it did. And then uh, there's only one other option. ACPI off. I'm not sure what that means, but we're going to try it because this isn't working very well. Okay, so we cannot run it without APCI or uh, APIC or whatever that is. And what you're currently seeing right now is not actually being outputted at all. Here we go. All right, I'm going to boot the laptop back into Antergos, see if I can flash this 
some other way. Although I cannot use unet boot in because unit boot in is a Linux tool. I don't think it would work with a BSD ISO image. All right, folks, we're going to try this one more time. Cross our fingers for better luck this time. I went ahead and I reformatted the flash drive, and I also re-downloaded and reflashed the ISO image. So I think I think this is farther than we got last time. Yeah, this is farther than we got last time. Okay, great. So as you can see, um, like I said, this is based off of FreeBSD. And here we go. All right, so we currently are mirroring the display. Lots of errors from VBox client. You probably failed to connect to the VirtualBox kernel service because we are not using VirtualBox. We're using an actual computer. So super plus space is now the default hotkey. What's super plus space do? Super plus space doesn't do anything. There we go. Keep this configuration. So, looks like we're not connected to the internet, which kind of sucks. And mates being weird again, um, as it is a lot. I feel like we had that problem with not connecting to the internet on PCBSD also. Alright, but here's the installer. We'll install offline for now and see how far we get. Uh, welcome to GhostBSD. English. USA. Yeah. Um, we are in America. And we want to use the Chicago time zone. Forward. Use entire disk. Uh, master boot record would be nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's asking, do we want to install this to the hard drive or to the USB drive? Obviously, I don't think it would let us install to the USB drive if we did click that because we're running off of the USB drive right now. So I'll put in the super secure root password. Boot manager. Uh, let's try the BSD boot manager. I've never used that before. Forward. And real name, Jacob. Oh. Jacob Kaufman. Okay. Uh, Jacob dash laptop. It will be the host name, username, Jacob password, super secure password. Once again, super secure f uh, shell. The default shell is fish, but I'm used to bash. But you know what? We'll we'll stick with fish. Since that is the default, and I want the BSD experience, like I said, we'll, we'll keep that at fish. I've never used that before. That'll be interesting. So we will install. Ah, this looks nice. Secure light. Light, emphasis on light. That's important. Full of new features, newest version of GhostBSD. Alright. If we don't get wireless when we restart this computer, then I will go ahead and grab an ethernet cable. Luckily, everywhere this laptop is is all in this basement, and we've got a 500 foot ethernet cable down here for this laptop. We just prefer not to use it, but we can if we need to. So install software. Um, just type pkg search. Okay, hello. Update manager there. Oh, and I missed how to install software now, because the update manager popped up in front. And I don't know why it's telling me updates are available if A, I'm not connected to the internet, and B, it's giving me a checkbox of a blank thing. What happened to my install box? Where'd the install dialog box go? Where did it go? I don't understand what happened. That's system monitor we've got a bunch of VBox clients going that's good to know um, I do not know what happened 
this is ridiculous. I'll click install. I don't know where it's going to get that from. Why would it prompt me to install updates if I'm not connected to the internet? I think I'm going to restart this computer and I'm going to do this again connected to the internet. I, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. We're going to restart this computer. Sorry, everyone. Not log out. Not log out. That's not what I wanted to click. There we go. Restart. All right. Let me grab an Ethernet cable. Like I said, I've got a 10 foot, give or take 10 foot Ethernet cable here at uh, my desk, specifically for when I have computers at my desk. And I've also got a 500 foot Ethernet cable running through the ceiling over to the other side of the room. And I can move that anywhere to the other side of the room that the laptop is on. So the point of me telling you that is just to let you know um, there are some deal breakers with BSD. Um, one long term deal breaker is Opera is no longer on BSD. So that, I mean, clearly it's not a deal breaker because I'm still installing this. But um, strangely enough, not having Wi Fi is not a deal breaker because, like I said, we can have this laptop plugged in if we need to anywhere this laptop is in the basement. So, now we're back to the mirrored thing. We've got the VBox client errors. There we go. Okay. All right. So now you can see the upper right hand corner. We do have internet, Ethernet there. So, open up our GhostBSD installer again. Let's go through this one more time. I don't know why it gives us the option to not have a boot manager. It seems kind of important. I'm going to go ahead and go with Grub Boot Manager since this didn't work last time and I'm used to Grub. We're going to we're going to click on Grub this time and stick with Fish install. All right, see if we can not crash it this time. Hopefully that update box doesn't pop up again. So it looks like we are I'm going to keep an eye on the status bar this time. Oh, and the slideshow as well. So type pkg search package search in the terminal to find what you're looking for package install to install what you're looking for so um, yeah BSD does have package managers now which is great and yeah that that new package manager is new in the new versions of FreeBSD so maybe not brand new but it's fairly new um, Shotwell comes with this I've never seen X I'm gonna pronounce it exhale Exhale, I think it. You know, it's spelled exhale, but I'm gonna say exhale. I've never seen that um, media player before, but usually media players are pretty similar to each other. Not a whole lot you can do there, other than just rearrange stuff. Um, we've got some sort of chat client there. Not sure what chat client. Firefox comes with this. I love Firefox. I don't actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I usually use Opera, but I wish I, I wish I was using Firefox because I trust Mozilla a whole lot more than I do anyone else. Of course, LibreOffice comes with this, and it's got that nice little graphic on the sidebar, so it must be a newer version of LibreOffice. Maybe that, um, yeah, the reason why that updates available thing came up was probably because I clicked on Update Manager. So that might have been my fault. Possibly my fault but you know we're gonna go ahead and say it's not my fault um, just cuz you know it's not a hundred percent confirmed or anything but yeah probably my fault so do we have any games with this that we can play while this is loading nope no games pretty boring looks like we do have a front end a graphical user interface for that new package manager um, we can see what version of mate we're running here now that it makes too big of a difference cuz you know mate doesn't change a whole lot. 1.10.2. And yeah. I do like this theme right off the bat. This is a nicer theme than PCBSD had. This is a nice, nice flat, um, dark theme. I know flat and dark are both buzzwords, but I still enjoy flat themes and dark themes more than I enjoy shiny themes like PCBSD had. Alright, installation is complete. Good to see it worked that time. So we will go ahead, oh I keep grabbing the mouse and clicking on the uh, my actual computer that I'm recording this on 
and not the trackpad on my laptop, so that's embarrassing. But yeah, we'll go ahead and restart doing all of that BSD power down things and BSD power up things probably. So now we'll go ahead and I removed the flash drive so we will boot into hopefully our BSD installation if there is one. Please let there be one. We are not getting any hard drive activity or anything. I'm gonna go ahead and restart this computer manually. Maybe it was trying to boot off that flash drive because I unplugged it kinda late. Yes! Alright. Hold left shift for menu. We do not need a menu right now. Booting. Great. So this is already a better experience than PCBSD. Let's see how quick it boots. Still way slower than Antergos. Antergos would be done booting by now. But we'll see if this is any faster than PCBSD. We'll have to uninstall that VirtualBox service because I still see that in that terminal. All right, I've got a mouse on the physical screen. Oh, okay, it looks like we're in dual screen mode right now. And we have the GNOME 3 login manager, or the GNOME display manager. Um, you guys cannot see it. Here, I'll take a picture of it real quick. If you've seen the GDM before, then it's nothing new, but um, here, I'll, I'll take a quick video with my phone. So that's what that looks like. And the mouse is kind of bugging out right now, but we can enter the GDM, or enter, you know, click on my username, type in our password, and now we've got mate. And now I'll go ahead and switch Okay, that was the boot sound. Now I'll go ahead and switch the um, the display back over to the capture card. Should be there. Okay, our mouse is bugging out. All right, I've got an error message. Okay, this is annoying. This is super annoying. This trackpad is not working very well. I'm going to get a mouse out. Here we go. Plugging in an Apple Mighty Mouse because that trackpad is glitching out the wazoo. So, there we go. Now I've got a mouse. I know you guys couldn't see that. Um, I've got an error message on the screen that says could not display help document mate user guide. The specified location is not supported. And we are frozen. We are 100% frozen, no hard drive activity, I cannot click on anything. Oh, no, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can't. Okay, bugging out again. My goodness, this is not the best user experience right now. I'll tell you that. Never happened under Antigos, I'm just saying. Um, okay, see, what you just witnessed was me... Okay, yeah, see that? that mouse flying all over the place that was me trying to use the trackpad um, now I'm using the the mighty mouse now you can see could not display help document you can see that there um, I don't have a problem with using the mighty mouse for a little while but it is super annoying that the trackpad does not work good thing I like the mighty mouse and once again good thing this laptop does not have to travel anywhere so let's go ahead and check for updates now Maybe some of these glitches are worked out already. And we're frozen again. Once again, no hard drive activity. Just deciding not to work. There we go. Software update available. I guess that means we should install that. Yeah, there's a problem with the input right now. Maybe a restart will fix it, but I'm going to install updates first if I can. 92 updates. That was a few updates. All right. Um... We'll go ahead and restart, and maybe the trackpad will work better after we restart. And now maybe we won't restart, because, I mean, I clicked restart, but it's not doing anything. I guess we'll give it a minute. Yep, nope, I clicked restart, but we're not restarting, so just another quirk. <sighs> restart. There we go. Um, okay, the trackpad is working better now, so go ahead and log in.
So yeah, maybe that was fixed by an update, maybe it was just the restart, but the trackpad does work now, and I have unplugged the Mighty Mouse. Now it's remembering our display settings, and there's that startup sound again. Alright. Yeah, see, Mate has some weird stuff with the panels sometimes, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, now that we've installed updates and the trackpad is working again, you can just take a look around. Looks like we have Plank that is a dock installed by default. We've also got some other stuff. Um, you can see everything there. Um, I will say the Mate menus seem to be loading faster than, than I'm used to, so that's nice. Um, in terms of the icons, loading quickly. We're going to take a look at Octo Package real quick before I let you guys go, because I want to see this this new file, not file, package manager. Okay. So if we search, say, Opera, we'll probably get nothing back because Opera is not made for BSD anymore. Um, yeah, see, we can get Opera 12, but that's years old. They're on Opera 31 right now. Or 30, I think it's 32 now, so yeah. Um, but if we type in Chromium, we can get that. What about regular old Chrome? Nope, just Chromium, which is understandable. So we will install that. Pretty easy to use and pretty quick. So we can either run this in the GUI or run it in Terminal. We'll do it in the GUI for now. Type in our root password. And looks like it'll just show us the the output. Oh, and the output tab. Makes sense. Hmm. I'm going to try this. Control G to download the latest news. It might be busy installing right now. Um, it's downloading things. But yeah, while that's going, um, we can look at. I mean, it's just your your basic made applications at this point. Um, I do like this theme. I want to say this theme is very nice. Props to them for for doing this. This theme is much better than the PCBSD theme. So great job, GhostBSD people, with that theme. So it looks like Chromium is done installing, which is good. And da, 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 where is it? Don't see it yet, but maybe it'll pop up later. Um, but yeah, that was installing GhostBSD 10.1. And I'll keep you guys updated. Hopefully I stick around with this one a little longer than, than I did PCBSD. So I'll let you guys know how this works out. But for now, that's everything I had to show you. So I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I will see you guys later. Bye.